Okay, let me start thanking the organizers for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. So uh, I'm going to talk about the joint work with Mohamed Fondun, which is in the University of Strathclyde. So uh, let me first introduce the equation we are interested in studying. So this is a heat equation with a fractional Laplacian. So, which is the infinitesimal generator of a symmetric alpha stable process, and the density is going to be denoted by P. So, alpha is between 0 and 2, so uh, the usual Laplacian is alpha equal to 2, so this will be included. And the noise is multiplicative, and the noise is uh, white in time with a correlation in space, since we are in uh, x is in d dimensions, okay? And to simplify, we're going to assume that the correlation is given by this uh, Reith kernel with power beta, with beta is between 2 and d. Uh, sigma, the multiplication, is a global ellipsoid function for the moment. And uh, the particular case with sigma u equal u, which is in particular interest what we're going to talk about, is called the parabolic Anderson model. In all the talk, the initial condition is going to be a non-negative and bounded function. Okay, so this is a classical equation and we're going to give a meaning, so it is well known that we can give a meaning of the solution to this equation via the mild formulation introduced by Walsh. Okay, so following Walsh, uh, so in this particular case of the fractional Laplacian and the risk kernel correlation, we need that beta is less than the minimum between alpha and the dimension of the space variable. And it is well known that uh, there is a unique uh, process which is adapted and join, jointly measurable in TNX that satisfies this integral equation. Okay, the first term is the one given by the initial condition and is the convolution between the initial condition and the density of the alpha stable process associated to the fractional Laplace. Okay, and this is the stochastic term which can be, uh, so which is a stochastic integral with respect to the noise. And so this is well known, and this uh, process has moments of our orders for any T fixed. Okay, good. So uh, our first motivation to, uh, for, this, uh, for this equation is a result by Fondun, Joseph, and Lee, a very recent result, which is a weak comparison principle for this equation. So this result says that if U and V are two solutions with respectively initial condition U0 and V0, which are comparable, then the solutions are comparable almost sure. Okay? So the proof of this type of results is a system of interacting SDEs, in this case with correlated Brownian motion, and in this particular case for the fractional Laplacian, they needed a new local limit theorem for stable processes. Okay? So this type of results are important because, for example, if sigma zero is zero, then this result gives non-negativity of the solution. Remember that the initial condition is non-negative, Okay, so that the solution stays non-negative, it was not known when sigma zero is zero before this result. Okay, so this is an important step. There have been many comparison principles for this type of equation. Let me just uh, mention the ones that are more related to this one. So the first well-known is Mueller, okay, which is the case where the noise is a space-time white noise and alpha equals to two. Uh, Chia Chen has also a weak comparison principle in the case of PAM, is parabolic Anderson model. Remember, sigma u equal u and alpha equal to 2. And the, the paper by the, so the approach by Muller has been extended by Le Chen and Kim for a more general initial condition and space time white noise. And later on by Le Chen and Wan but for measure value initial condition and alpha equal to 2. Okay? So this was uh, uh, why I said that is our first motivation, because in most of these papers, the weak comparison principle is a strong comparison principle, meaning that the uh, inequalities are strict. Okay, so our goal, our first contribution to, of this paper was to provide a strong comparison principle for this equation, which was not known until now. Okay, 
So we proved in our paper that uh, if the solutions are strictly comparable, then the solutions are strictly comparable. Okay, so uh, we follow the proofs by Muller, Lechen, and Lechen and Kim bec uh, because all these papers have also a strong comparison pin principle. But uh, so uh, the, w the one which is more uh, comparable to our equation is this one, is the second one, because they also have a correlated noise, but they have a they don't have a fractional Laplacian. So extending to usual Laplacian to fractional Laplacian sometimes is just straightforward. In this case, it's not because they, uh, when we follow the proof, it only works for alpha bigger than one. Okay, so we use another idea, a new idea, which is a regulation effect of the fractional Laplacian that I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay. Moreover, these proofs are kind of technical, and we were able to provide a uh, simplification of the proof. Okay. So, um, so in this paper by Li Cheng and Wan, they, they consider general spatial covariances. We believe that our paper could also be extended. Also, uh, we were lazy for that. So just to uh, sake of uh, notation and everything, we consider just the risk kernel, but we believe. And also the initial function for us is always, uh, remember, a bounded function. They consider more types of general uh, initial conditions, so we, we believe also that this could be extended, okay? Okay, so let me give you a flavor about the proof for going to the weak to the strong, because we're going to use the weak comparison principle, okay? So here is the idea of the proof. So it suffices to prove that the solution is strictly positive for all t and x almost surely, okay? So the idea is the following. You fix epsilon r on t. So this will always be fixed in the proof. And the idea is to split the integral, the interval, the time interval 0 t into subintervals of length t divided by m. And then m will go to infinity. And then the idea is to look at the probability. So we want to show that u is strictly positive. So we look for t strictly positive. So we look at u shifted by a little epsilon. Okay, and we look at the probability that this stays positive. Okay, so this is what we want to show that it's one. Okay, and we compare, we, we consider a lower bound using this, uh, this sequence of events, which is that this shifted uh, solution is lower bounded by a constant, by some constant that will appear later, and the indicator function of x in a ball. So this, this notation br is for the ball of radius r in rd. Okay, in a, a small interval of length of t divided by n. Okay, so you can easily see that this is true, and now the idea is to show that this limit is one. Okay, to show that this limit is one, uh, we're going to use a kind of um, large deviation uh, type uh, bound. Okay, and this is the idea. So. The, so this is the, la, the large deviation type bound, is that the probability that this shift uh, solution is uh, bigger or equal to a constant in a small interval, it can be lower bounded by one minus the exponential of this thing that is going to converge to, to one, right? Right, to, to obtain this, you need to first uh, lower bound the initial term, and this is the, this proposition one is the place where they strongly were using that alpha would be bigger than one if we extend, okay? So our idea was to use the fact that this term, which is the deterministic term, when s equals to zero, is a smooth, so it's going to be strictly positive, okay? So here, this, this is where we use this regulation effect of the fractional Laplacian. Okay, so using this trick, you can prove that this first term of this is going to be lower bounded by a constant less than one, okay? And then we have uh, bounds for the moments of this guy, so using, so controlling the initial condition is sufficient because the stochastic term can be controlled using uh, Chevy Chev and the moments, okay? So using this, you can get this lower bound, okay? So, so this is the interval zero t divided by m. So if we go back to our events, this is going to be the first integral. So the first event i zero is s between zero and t divided by m. So we can apply this to the first event. Okay. To the others event, the idea is to write these events as conditional. Okay. So to write these as a sequence of products of conditional. So p a k conditional to the past events. Okay. And in order to, to bound these past events, this is another trick. 
So this other trick, which is similar to the ones in the other papers, is done is to observe that by definition of these events, on the event AK minus 1, we have this fact. We have this U evaluated at K T divided by M plus epsilon is lower bounded by the constant power K. Okay, this is true on the event AK minus 1. So the idea here, so this, first we want to use the Markov property, and second we want to use the weak comparison principle and to consider two equations for which this is the initial condition of the first equation and this is the initial condition of the second equation. So if we do that, because on the event AK minus 1 the initial conditions are, com are uh, comparable, the solutions are going to be comparable as well by the weak comparison principle. So this is the idea. And we need to use the Markov property because of this shift. So what is the equation that is going to have this as initial condition is the uh, solution to our equation with the time shift noise. Okay? And this, the initial condition of this equation is this. And then now we consider the solution to our equation with the time shift noise, the same time shift noise, but sigma replaced by this uh, by this other sigma k, okay, but this doesn't hurt because sigma zero is still zero, and the initial condition is going to be now indicator function of the ball. So this is to include the c1k, okay? So here are the, so this equation, so this us plus this is going to have initial condition this, and this guy is going to have initial condition this now. So why the weak comparison principle, they are comparable. And now the idea is to, for this guy, is to use the preceding estimate, this one, okay? So, so we're going to have the estimate for this guy. So we, we conclude that the probability that this is lower bounded by a constant satisfies the estimate before, okay? So we obtain that the conditional probabilities are also estimated by this. So as a consequence, the limit is one and the proof is complete. Okay, so the idea is to, uh, to split these intervals and then use the Markov property and the weak comparison principle and then to conclude the proof. So this is the main idea to go from a weak comparison principle to a strong comparison principle. So, these, uh, so this is our first contribution. Um, uh, well, a more quantitative result can be also obtained and this is simple, this is just a direct, simply, uh, direct extension of the all the papers that have this type of result. So for example, the first paper of where this appeared is Konus, Joseph, and Kosnevision for the case of space-time y knows an alpha equal to 2. Okay? So this is a more quantitative result. It says how the quantitative result about the strict positivity of the solution that I, I, I just show you. So these results, so for these results we need sigma 0 equal to 0, which is not the case for the comparison principles. Uh, so here we fix t and k a compact set, then we can show that there is this constant depending on t and k, so that the probability that u is very small is upper bounded by this guy. Okay, so this is a more quantitative result that uses the strong Martok property and the weak comparison principle again. Okay, well, so here the extension is more straightforward, so it was, it's less interesting. Uh, okay, so a second motivation, so the second motivation we included in the same paper because it's, it's also in the same paper. So this paper where they got the weak comparison principle, they also got a moment comparison theorem, okay? Which is also a very interesting result because, as I'm going to tell you in a minute. So what does this moment comparison theorem say? Take two solutions, one with sigma global ellipsis, the other with another global ellipsis functions, for which sigma and sigma bar are comparable. And here we need that they are bigger or equal to zero and they both uh, at zero equal zero. So then they show that the moments are also comparable. Okay, so this is also a very important result as I'm going to tell you why. So these, um, so Fondun and Jessov, uh, as always, they are in the setting of our equation. So fractional Laplacian correlated noise. So this extends the result by Joseph, Kosnevision, and Muller, where they got uh, only space-time white noise. Okay. So what is an uh, important consequence of, uh, of this result is the following. So an important, an immediate consequence actually, because of these estimates. So an immediate consequence are sharp moment estimates for the solution. Because for the case of parabolic and Anderson model, this uh, type of uh, shape uh, 
Um, estimates are known, for example, in the preprint by Kim, uh, and then extending to parabolic Anderson model for a general sigma, we need a moment comparison principle. Okay, so in this, so to get this bound, so for the upper bound, we just need the Lipschitz, but for the lower bound, we need sigma to be lower bounded. Okay, and to apply this uh, moment, the moment comparison principle, we need sigma zero equal to zero. Okay, so these are estimates are only in the case that we have this for the these two condition. And remember that the initial condition is upper bounded, so here we also need that the initial condition is lower bounded. Okay, so when the initial condition is upper and lower bounded, and sigma is essentially upper and lower bounded as by x, we have these sharp moment estimates for the solutions which were unknown till the work by Fondun, Joseph, and Lee. Okay, so here we see that, uh, uh, so I'm going to put so new, I didn't talk about new, new, sorry, I forgot in the, in the equation. Uh, so this is going to be important. So new is the viscosity constant, okay? So we are going to derive all the estimates in terms of new. This is important because then there are regimes that are comparable with other dynamical systems, okay? So it's interesting always to see in which regime we are. Okay, so uh, let's go back. So here are sharp moment estimates that, as I said, were unknown before this uh, moment comparison principle, okay? So, uh, so why are moment sharp estimates interesting? So there's one, um, one uh, immediate consequence of this is what is called intermittency for the solution. So these moment estimates show in particular that the solution is fully intermittent. What does it mean? It means that if you look at this guy, the limb soup, when t is large of the log of the moment, so we call this the moment Lyapunov exponent, and you look at the function k, so k is the moment, and you divide by k, the moment estimates imply that this is always strictly increasing for all k bigger or equal to 2. So it can be easily shown that this is always increasing, but it's only strictly increasing in some particular case. Okay? And this is strictly increasing property is a, is a phenomenon that is interesting because uh, it can be shown that this uh, intuitively gives that the solution, that the moments are going to be concentrated and it's going to give uh, high peaks of the solution that are going to be distributed over small x intervals when t is large. So if you simulate the solution using an, an approximation, you will see that the solution develops very high peaks uh, when t is large and, and they are very small, so they are distributed over very small x intervals, okay? So uh, this was well known. Uh, big, well, here I put fully because uh, this was well known uh, from the weak intermittency. So weak intermittency, I didn't um, mention here, but it's just saying that uh, so if, if we call gamma k the moment Lyapunov exponent of this, right? The, the, so this moment, so weak intermittency is defined as uh, something so weaker than this to be strictly increasing is just that this is strictly bigger than zero and gamma k is always finite for all k bigger or equal to two. Okay, so this is weak intermittency. Okay, uh, so it can be sh easily shown that uh, when you have a comparison principle, so the, when the solution stays positive, weak intermittency implies full intermittency. So that the solution is weak intermittent was well known before the, the work by Fondun, Joseph, and Lee. But now that we have this uh, comparison principle, we know that the solution is also fully intermittent. Okay? In any case, both, uh, both things imply this intuitive of the solution. Okay, so this is our motivation uh, because this, gives a, this says that the solution has a chaotic behavior and we want to understand better this chaotic behavior by studying, so this is all about moments, and now what we, our second contribution is going to be asymptotic properties, but almost shortly, okay? And to see how this behavior, uh, to understand better the behavior, we're going to derive asymptotic properties and we're going to see different cases of the initial data. 
Okay? So uh, here is our second contribution. So in this second contribution, we stay with the initial data bounded below. Okay, so what, one key, what can we say in this case, almost sure? Well, first a remark is that, well, first of all, if U0 is just bounded, then since now we know that the solution is positive, the expectation of the stochastic term is zero, so the solution is going to be uniformly bounded. Then from Fatou's lemma, since the solution is positive, we also get that the Lee inf when x goes to infinity is bounded as well. Okay? So, but in contra, in construct, we are, we prove that the solution is going to be unbounded, that the supremum is going to be unbounded when x is large. Okay, so this gives this uh, chaotic behavior of the solution. Okay, so the limit is bounded, but the soup is unbounded. And here we prove more, we prove that, that there's, so the assumptions are always going, for the moment is uh, that the sigma, this assumption with the sigma are always are needed because we're going to need these sharp estimates and this about the initial condition. So we show that the supremum of the solution in a ball, the logarithm, when r is infinity, it uh, blows up under this rate, log of r of this power and t of this power and the viscosity the theorem of this power and this is an almost sure result. Okay, so this is our, um, First result on asymptotics, okay? So some results were of this type were known before, but only for the parabolic Anderson model. And, and the case uh, where no, there's no fractional Laplace, okay? And in this paper, they don't have either the exact uh, conversions in time. They only have constant and dependent time. So this is a major improvement of this result. Uh, Chia Chen has also exact spatial asymptotics for the parabolic and Anderson model, and he also considers the noise which is uh, fractional in time. Okay. Okay. So what is um, so what is the proof of this result? Um, so here is a sketch of the main ideas from the sharp moment estimates. We can derive uh, tail estimates. Okay, for the solution. Okay, so here there are a lot of constants, but it's, these are the constants that we need in order to get these exact uh, uh, numbers, okay? So here, the first lemma is uh, supremum of the probability bigger than la lambda in the upper bound, and the second lemma is the infimum with the lower bound, okay? So these are easy to get using the sharp moment estimates, okay? So this is the first ingredient of the proof. Uh, the second ingredient is uh, something that is also in the paper by Konus, Joseph, and Kosnevision, and it's an interesting step because, uh, so we need to show that if two points n x prime are big O1 apart, then the two solutions are approximately independent. What does it mean? It means that there exists a sequ uh, an approximation sequence that is going to be independent random variables, okay? So this is something that uh, uses an idea that was already in, uh, in Walsh uh, construction of the stochastic integral, okay? So that if you consider two stochastic integrals a la Walsh and, and uh, for the same interval zero t, but here you put independent, um, sorry, you put disjoint events, then the, the stochastic integrals are going to be independent processes, okay? So this is a property that Walsh uses in his uh, construction of the stochastic integral. Okay, and it's a key uh, step of the proof of this asymptotic result. Okay, so in our case, this is the approximation sequence that we need in order to show this fact, and it's uh, so it's a Picard, it's given by a Picard iteration. So the first, the first one is just u naught, and the second one is an approximation of the solution. So I'm just giving the main steps since it's a bit more involved than that. But the idea is here to uh, localize in the ball. Okay, and also to localize, uh, to consider an approximation of the noise, which is essentially multiplying the risk, the correlation by this function, okay, essentially. Okay, so this is the, the approximation sequence that can, be, um, that can be used in our case. So using this approximation sequence, we obtain this sequence of independent random variables as soon as the x, as soon as xi is a sequence in Rd, that are uh, such that the difference is bigger or equal to this, then it can be shown, as I said, using this idea by Walsh, that these are independent random variables, and this is going to be a crucial step in the proof. 
So this is an approximation sequence, so we also need to see uh, the moments of the difference of the solution with this approximation sequence, and using the moment estimates, it can be shown that they are of this, uh, of this time, okay? Right, so these are the main ingredients. I mean, um, so I'm just giving the, the flavor of the proof, since of course there are a lot of technicalities. And here is the main idea of the sketch. So here I just sketch the lower bound, the upper bound follows with a similar idea. So maybe let's start with the, with the bottom, okay? So what is the idea to prove that the, the lower bound, okay? So remember that we have the supremum of u, and here L is the one that we need. So remember that we had the log divided by some r, the log of r at some power, and here we have t, and we have nu at some power. So the, the L is exactly what we need, okay, to get the bound, and we need to prove this as r is infinity. So the idea is to use a borel contelli lemma approach and to show that the probability that this supremum is less or equal to R is less or equal to C divided by R squared. Okay, so this is the main idea, okay, which in this case is the same as the paper by Kosnivishan and the others. And the idea to prove this is to use this approximation sequence. Okay, this independent approximation sequence and to fix X1, Xn that, uh, that satisfy the theorem of the fact that it's independent, okay, and to subtract and add this sequence, okay, and then uh, using the fact that it's independent, this can be uh, written as a product, power n, and this bound comes from the fact that this approximates to this, using, uh, this bound comes from this bound, okay? Okay, so this is a bit long, I just wanted to give the flavor, but the idea is to choose n, small n, big n, and r, in a right way so that this bound holds, okay, and to be able to apply borel contelli lemma to get the result, okay? So this is the idea for the lower bound. The upper bound also uses a borel contelli lemma idea, okay? Right, so this, is a, so this is the second contribution of the paper. And the third contribution and last one was what happens if we remove the condition that the initial data is bounded below, okay? So let's see, a, for a little, a simple example. Let's start with an initial condition, which is the indicator function in the ball, okay? Then one can prove that when x is outside the ball and r is large enough, the, so the expectation of the solution, remember that the, that the stochastic term is zero, so this can be upper bounded using the kernel estimates, okay? So if we, if, in this particular case, if we assume that alpha is bigger than one, a borel contelli argument shows that Liminf in this case is going to converge to zero, okay? So when you drop the bounded condition, uh, bounded below condition, this can influence a lot the behavior of the solution and you can get very different uh, things. So the idea is um, for this type of equations, uh, is, is, it can be also easily, it can also be proved that when U0 has compact support, uh, the solution is going to be bounded. Okay, so we prove that when the solution is lower, when the initial condition is lower bounded, the solution is unbounded. But when the initial condition has compact support, it's bounded. So this suggests that if the solution has a decay and infinity, so it's not compact support, but has a decay to zero at infinity, the solution might stay bounded in some cases. So the solution, so the idea of this problem is, what is the amount of decay that we need to ask to the initial condition to ensure that it's bounded? Okay, so that's the idea. So now the initial, so we drop the lower bound uh, initial bounded below condition and we replace it by the fact that it's going to decay to zero at infinity. It's going to be uh, decreasing. And we have this, uh, this comparison with the log of the initial condition and the log of x with this power, okay? So, and what we're going to see in the case is that, so this is that the lambda is strictly positive or finite or infinity, we're going to see what happens to the boundedness of the solution, okay? So when the log of u naught is going to go to infinity faster or uh, more um, quickly or in the same rate that this guy, we're going to see uh, how the solution behaves in this case, okay? And here is the result. So when the lambda is strictly positive or finite, okay, then one can show that there exists a random variable t such that below t the solution is bounded but after t is going to be unbounded. 
when gamma is infinity, okay, so infinity, so this means that uh, this one wins, okay, so that it goes slower than this one, then we get that the solution is bounded for all time. And when this is zero, so it's the other way around, that the solution is unbounded for all times. Okay, so we get this uh, trichotomy result, which is again uh, an extension and a major extension of Li Shen, uh, Kosnevichian, and Kim. They consider space time white noise and alpha equal to two. And, and we also improve their method of proof. And ours is based on a completely different uh, thing, which is a ground walls type result. Okay. Okay, so this is the behavior of the solution dropping the, the bounded below condition. So let me give um, the idea of the proof of this result. So, uh, oh, I forgot. So, so a couple of remarks before the uh, idea of the proof. So a very interesting uh, behavior here is that assume that the risk kernel is beta equal to one. Then, so we're going to see now the effect of the fractional Laplacian, right, here. So remember, alpha is the fractional Laplacian, beta is the noise, okay? So when alpha equals two, so beta is one, let's, it's just a remark, so beta is one. So when alpha is two, this is going to be two thirds. And when alpha is, different, is less than two, this is going to be alpha divided by two alpha minus one. And this turn out to be always one less than the other. So if you choose epsilon, which is in between, and you consider the initial condition that behaves that log of x power epsilon, you get that for the usual Laplacian, you are in the regime where lambda is infinity, and for the fractional Laplacian, you are in the regime with gamma is zero. So it's interesting to see that for the, the same initial data, the same noise, the equation behaves completely different if we, you put the usual Laplacian or the fractional Laplacian in one is unbounded and the other is bounded, okay? And you can get, uh, so you can also, um, so you can get different behaviors also if you fix fractional Laplacian and you move the noise, okay? So that's an interesting remark. And the second remark just says what I mentioned at the beginning is that in particular, if u naught is constant with complex support, then the theorem shows that the solution is bounded for all times are sure, which is what we expect for this type of equations. Okay, so let me go to the, so this is the key result. The key result is, um, is to analyze how the solution is sensitive to small changes of the initial data. Okay, this is the key result. So it's, uh, this result is needed in order to get sharp tail uh, probability bounds of the solution. Okay, so here is one way of, of seeing this. How is the solution sensitive to small changes that the initial data? So here is a, a result. So take two solutions that have initial data that are equal in a ball of radius 2R. Okay, and then look at the supremum of the difference of the moment in the ball of radius R. Okay, so when R is large, these are going to be uh, more and more uh, equal. Okay, so this theorem says that when n is large, the values of the solution are in the ball are insensitive to the changes outside the ball, even if the initial conditions are equal outside the ball, because they are equal in a bigger ball. Okay, so this is this um, insensitive theorem that was already in the, in the paper, but in this paper, the proof of this uses a technical lemma that appeared the first time by Li Cheng and Dalang, and here uh, we didn't want to use this because it was too technical to extend this to our setting, so we use a completely different uh, result, so it's, and it's very simple. It just used the mild formulation for this guy. This makes appear this again. But we want to use Gronwald's lemma, but Gronwald's lemma, uh, here we have the ball of R and here 2R. So what we do is to extend Gronwald's lemma in the case that here you have a function that depends on R and here you have a function that depends on 2R, okay? So, uh, so this is a, a fractional Gronwald's lemma, so you have inside this T minus S power gamma, but this is, these are well known when R are equal, okay? This is the work by Henry in the 80s. Okay, so here we are able to extend this when, as I said, you just use the mild formulation, so you get the same function again, but in one case you get R, and the other case you get 2R. Okay, so iterating, 
uh, iterating this, uh, you need these two conditions, this one to, to show that the rest term converges to zero, and then this one to show that the function is upper bounded by exponential constant time t times the function r. Okay? So this is our main contribution. So this is the main ingredient to prove, and it's completely different what, uh, what, what it was done here. Okay, so this is the proof of this line. So using, um, so using this insensitive theorem, then one is able to, and the tail estimates, so uh, from the sharp moments, then uh, we are able to prove these uh, sharp estimates on the, on the tails of the solution, okay? Which says that, uh, that the log of the tails divided by the log of x are upper and lower bounded by these guys. Okay, so as I said, uh, the viscosity constant here plays the role of seeing uh, regimes that are, can be similar to other dynamical systems. And this is uniformly of T on every fixed compact subset. Okay, so uh, this plus, a again, a borel cantelli argument gives the proof of this uh, trichotomy result. Okay, so these are the main ingredients. Okay, so just to finish, let me uh, look, uh, show you the references that I have been mentioned. So the, uh, the first comparison principle for the heat equation uh, that in, the, in the setting that we're dealing here is this uh, Mueller in 91. Then the extensions are this paper by Cheng and Gan that we appear in the Annals of Probability and this other paper on, on the space-time white noise and this is the one for the weak equation. And then the, for the space-time white noise, this trichotomy theorem is in this first paper. And finally, the case where the initial condition is lower bounded, this is, was done in this paper. And, uh, and our paper is not uh, submitted yet, so we, it will be soon. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? I was not sure during the whole, all the talk, what is the sign of alpha minus beta and two alpha minus beta? Is it fixed always? Do you have yes. fixed as um, So yeah, that was uh, here. So always ah, yes. positive, yeah. Uh, are there any other questions? So you said you could extend this to other co spatial covariances, but I mean the exponent beta is appearing in many, no, many only, places. No, 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 only the, you're right. Uh, no, no, not, no, the other results are used very strongly. Only the strong comparison principle. No, no, all the other results we use very strong that we have the risk kernel. No, no, this, uh, we don't. Only, only this one, which is this one. And in this insensitivity result you mm -hmm. showed on the second to last slide. Yeah. So, um, how comes the initial condition, to, I mean, yeah, um, it doesn't depend, it can't so really be that it doesn't here, depend actually. at all on the... No, oh. it's here, but uh, it's, since it's bound, so here you have, uh, actually this can be written better because um, since they are upper bound, so yeah, here I, so this is something I, I should correct, but here the, uh, I'm missing the, this norm. Uh, so you have this norm appearing in front, actually. Okay. But then, actually, it's not really needed afterwards mm -hmm. because they are all bounded. But yeah, I should write it in this way. I thought that is weak. So yeah, this should be in front. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, so let's thank both speakers again.